So there's been a, a lot of reporting recently uh, about black pudding and whether it's a superfood or not. And a lot of people are confused as to whether it's sensible or not to eat. And part of this really lies into the, the actual the media that have been used and the credibility that, that stands behind the behind the, the message the message channels. So what we're looking at is we've got, we've got organisations such as the Telegraph, the Independent, and many other leading news sources which people will trust. And it, 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 you, you hear things such as it's surprisingly good for you, and fried breakfast lovers are rejoicing as black pudding has been reportedly joined the ranks of kale and blueberries and pomegranates. So we can look at some of these in a moment, um, and and people will think really that that, 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 that seems a bit ridiculous you know everyone knows it's full of fat but then they're thinking well you're going to this is what causes a conflict they're featured in credible publications so it must be true and, and this is why people get confused the first thing i think you need to look at with this is what defines a superfood most people have no idea but they like the word they like to think that they're eating something great they certainly want to tell people they're eating superfoods including their, their own conscious uh, and the thing with the conscience is if, if it thinks it's doing good things and, and people love to hear good things about their bad habits, well then great. That's all the better. So we, let's look at a definition of superfood. And the best that I, I could find was from Wikipedia, actually. And Wikipedia is not always the best source, but in this instance, it, it was a very good, succinct definition. It's saying superfood is a marketing term used to describe foods with supposed health benefits. There's two bits and pieces in it that I pick out. One is marketing and the other is supposed. So what we've got there is we're saying it's a marketing term, so it's designed to help the product be sold, and supposed is simply implying it. It's subjective. It's not objective at all. And it is. It's, it's really. It's quite a good definition. At that point, I would stop. I would say, right. I don't now know whether this is going to be good for me or not because it's just a marketing term. That's it. So what they're doing here, and this this is the way it's been spun with the marketing, is we're saying, well, okay, so black pudding's got lots of zinc and potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, and protein, and yes, it does. Do you need those things? Yes, you do. Are they good for you? Yes, depending on the amount that you consume. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. Keeping this subjective, you can't consume black pudding and only consume this. You have to consume the whole food. It's very difficult to pull these things out uh, without some specialised equipment. And, and that's just not going to happen. So we have to think about, it. okay, so the health benefits of consuming these foods are there, but there's more to it. And what I'm saying with that is, if we look at it, what is actually in this food, we have to think about it. And we have to be careful with these sorts of things because there's a lot of trends that will rise. You know, a lot of these media reports are also saying how black pudding contains almost no carbs. Uh, is, is that a good thing? People don't know. People have no idea. So it, we take this simply and we look at the data. Whenever I approach something and somebody says, this is good for you, this is bad for you, should I eat this, should I not, we refer back to the data. It's always going to come down to the data. And um, if you understand a little bit about food marketing and the way foods are put together and marketed and put on shelves and positioned in terms of whether they're sensible to eat or not, ignore every single thing on that, that packaging apart from the ingredients and nutrition facts. Everything else is purely marketing and doesn't have to tell the truth. Nutrition facts is the only thing that has to tell the truth and even then it's still quite complicated for most people to understand. So really what you've got 100 grams of black pudding, you get 379 calories of which 311 come from fat. That's a lot. So it doesn't really take a genius to conclude that over 82% of calories in this food come from fat. How do you work that out? Well, you go into a calculator and you take 311 and you divide it by 379 so we've got 311 calories from fat total calories 379 and you multiply that result by 100 to get a percentage that's your answer how many calories come from fat in terms of percentage almost 88 it's pushing 83 percent of the calories in this food come from fat that's a lot that's a, a huge amount uh, and it's extremely high fat food and Again, I'm not trying to say fat is bad, because I'm not. We need fat. But in terms of how much do we actually need, in terms of percentage from calories, well, about 3 to 5% is what we're looking at from the leading research. And that, that this has been done over long-term studies and large studies as well. That's all you really need. Anything extra, your body will tend to store as body fat. So you'll actually end up wearing this fat. That's what will happen. Unless you burn it off, but you're not. You're going to struggle to burn it off as a lot of calories, huge. Unless you're running marathons, you're unlikely to burn that sort of energy off. And certainly, the average person will not be able to do that. 
And a lot of these fats are always saturated fats. They're really difficult for the body to break down. Really, really difficult because of the way that the bonding works within these fats. They can't break it down so easily. So even if you start to burn this off, it's still going to be a struggle. Uh, the cholesterol is, is through the roof. The sodium is, is even worse. And when you understand the, the chemical formula, sodium chloride, to NaCl, you can work out how much salt that is. This has been positioned really almost to dumb this down with the amount of sodium. Actually, what you're looking at in here is you take this 680 and you multiply it by 2.5. That takes it from sodium to salt. That's how much you're getting. It's 1,700 milligrams, 1 1.7 grams of salt in 100 grams of this. And 100 grams is not a huge amount. It's about four small slices. So what you've really got going on here is, yes, you've got a food which is good in terms of the minerals, that you take from it, but you've got a food which is extremely high in fat, extremely high in cholesterol, and absurdly high in salt. And virtually no carbohydrates, no fiber, and that means you're not going to get very full from eating this. So you're probably going to be hungry not soon afterwards. Not not sensible at all. And, and this is really the points that I've made on here. I've actually labeled this, I've said it's not a superfood. I, I would actually go as far as to say it's a stupid food. And that's in no way just having a bit of fun with it, if you eat this and you understand this data, which I'm about to show you, then I would say essentially you're being stupid. It's not a smart thing to eat. There's always different reasons that we're talking about. And we have a look at this, but you can see why people are confused. I mean, this website, The Telegraph, is an incredibly credible site. And you look at this, you know, and you've got it here. You know, when, you, when people read this, they think, wow, that's sensible. They really do. I mean, this, this, was, this was pushed forward by a, another journalist here who writes for another newspaper. Now, I don't know, and I can't prove it, whether somebody is being paid to push these articles forward, but you look at this. I mean, this is coming through from this site here. We're looking at here. We're saying this is, this is saying that healthy eating was you know re reaching a new level in 2015, and this year, 2016, it's going to get only bigger. But that doesn't say anything about black pudding at all. This content has been spun completely. It doesn't make any sense, which is absurd. And we can look at this muscle food site in a minute. And then we look who put this article together. Well, is this chap here who shares the same name as me, but we probably wouldn't share much else in terms of our opinions and views, uh, and certainly not a scientific approach. But I went through and looked at what else he put together. Uh, and he's a head of trending content. So he looks at what's maybe cool and that's about it, really, and then puts this stuff together. Now, he probably has lots of other admirable qualities, but I'm only looking at the work that I can see. Um, you've got one here, he's talking about some teenagers stealing hubcaps, uh, somebody who unfortunately died from excessive deodorant use. Um, some adverts here. Um, he's talking about, he wrote, he was putting together an article about a monkey who took a selfie, can't own the copyright. Um, and a woman accidentally sets her car on fire at a petrol station. So I would say this person perhaps is not the best person to be deciding what you can and cannot eat and whether it's sensible to or not. So I think we're going to get rid of his work. Um, but again, you see, we've got this, you know, I put in here to Google black pudding superfood. It, it's, all, it's all over it. And it's nuts. Absolutely crazy. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, and then we look again, again you, you see this stuff. I mean, Yahoo's right up at the top in here in the search engines. What have you got going on here? Same situation. Same situation. Same quote again. This muscle food. This is again, we're looking at this. And people like to hear these things. People like the word muscles and things like that. So you go on this muscle food website. And what, what are they selling? Well, they've got a few celebrity endorsements, it looks like. I'm not sure what else there is. I think the rest is probably just, just selling. Yeah, it is. Uh, and you look at what, what, what are they actually selling? Well, here you go. So it's the protein peanut butter prawlings, high protein cheesy garlic bread. You, you, you're going to know that these things are not going to be good for you. You're going to have an inkling. And you can see that. So here we go. And across it's all the way through. You can order some meat stacks if you wanted to, some high protein nuts for. Well, Nuts are high in protein anyway. I, I've never seen low protein nuts, so I'm not really sure what, what that's intended to do. And this is not to be unprofessional, it's just to show you where somebody's pulling this evidence from. I, that, that's what we're talking about. Where are they get leaning on for their credibility? And you, you go forward with this and this is all meat as far as we can see. And then you get the supplements start to roll out as well. What they're not selling is any statin drugs. That would probably be quite a good complement to add on to this. 
Uh, you can also buy some t-shirts as well. I would suspect that people who eat lots of black pudding probably wouldn't look like this. I would be very surprised if you could start to see the abs come through. Um, and then right at the bottom, here you go, the vegetables. This is sort of corporate social responsibility, as I deem it. Um, but anyway, we we'll go through and we look at, let's look at the data because that's what this is really about. So what have you got? So your four slices, four small slices, make 100 grams, a typical serving. Pro people probably eat more than that. That's the label that we looked at earlier. Look at these sort of charts and, and these prisms that are really useful, actually, just for feeling quick data. This is a great site, actually. Yes, it's got adverts on it, but that's just to fund it because it's essentially not profit. Um, but it's nutritiondata.self.com. Um, we look at this. Well, what happens when you get scored from one to five? And they give you these fullness factors, and then they give you this sort of because when you can move it around, so it's very, very high in fat, protein not overly high, uh, and very low in carbohydrates. So you get a very low glycemic load, which people might think, well, that's a great thing to do if I'm diabetic. Well, actually, no. Diabetes is not caused by carbohydrates. It's only once people have a diabetic problem that then they have to be cautious with the carbohydrates that they eat. That the actual disease is caused by eating these foods which are very high in fat. Um, so in terms of weight loss, well, it's not good at all. And in terms of optimal health, it's not good at all. It's scoring very poorly. And, and weight gain is sort of starting to creep up, but it doesn't really count there. The reason why is because people probably wouldn't eat this very often. Although it's said it's a, a breakfast staple, apparently, in a lot of parts of the country, but I don't think that's true, and I've travelled extensively. The nutrient balance we're looking at here, when you look at this sort of this nutrient wheel, yeah, okay, it's got, it is very, very high in the sodium, okay, and, and that's fine. These are minerals on this side, these are vitamins on this side. Very few vitamins at all, very, very few vitamins, very, very high in iron, and that makes sense uh, because it's blood, so there's things like hemoglobin. So it kind of fits in with what we're looking at. It's certainly not a superfood at all. Superfoods, if you're going to look at them, actually have health benefits rather than being just a marketing term. They tend to fill this wheel much more uniformly and they have this amino acid score as well which is likely to be high because of the amount of protein that it contains but important thing to take from this is per calorie what what's it made up in terms of percentage and it's the fats are just absolutely dominating just wiping everything off the chart here and um, look at another food for example potato what about potato now look at this lots and lots of carbohydrates that's a good thing in this form because this is unprocessed carbohydrates. Very low in fat, very, very low in fat. In fact, because it's under 0 0.5 grams per 100 grams, you can get away with saying it's fat free. And 7% protein. That's all you really need. You don't really need any more than that. So if you're eating enough calories, two, two and a half thousand a day or whatever it might be that you might need, well, you're going to get enough protein anyway. And you look at this. So potatoes score much more highly on, for weight loss, actually, and weight gain. And the reason why is people tend to put lots of things on potatoes. But in terms of optimal health, it scores very high. Glycemic load, in, interestingly, is only 10. Only 10. It's not high on the glycemic load. If you're diabetic, can you eat potatoes? Yeah, definitely, in the whole form. What you can't do is then go and put these foods which are high in fat on. And look at this. This is a much nicer wheel when we look at this in terms of the nutrient balance. Potatoes far closer to being a superfood. And look, interestingly, in terms of the quality of protein from a potato is higher than it is from this superfood they call black pudding. That's important, very, very important. So if you want better protein, don't eat the black pudding, eat the potato. And you're gonna get all these benefits as well. You're gonna get all these vitamins as well as the minerals also. That, that's an interesting one to look at. And then we can look at kale, which has been reported to be up there as well. If I go back to what I've written here, you look at this. Uh, they're saying that, where did I put it? Just up here, actually. So they're saying that fried breakfast love, lovers are rejoicing as black pudding has reportedly joined the rank of kale as a superfood. Well, let's look at kale. So right up on here, in terms of being more filling and having nutrients, Foods that are further along here and up here are much better for you. Breakdown is nice and nicely weighted towards the carbohydrates, so you can feel full. Relatively low in fat, and it's got a good amount of protein. Very high in protein, actually. Glycemic load right down there. Off the charts in terms of, of weight loss, optimal health, and weight gain. You're not going to gain weight if you eat kale. And then you look at the you look at the nutritional facts information here as well. 
it's, it's incredibly good. I don't need to go through with the details. And then you look at this. Wow. I would say kale probably could be deemed as a superfood. And again, protein quality higher than black pudding. Powerful. Very, very powerful. And then one more which I took was blueberries because they'd also been mentioned. Blueberries not quite as high up on it as the kale. But where is it? Remember the black pudding was down here. So this is right up there. Good good in terms of weight loss, optimal health, and you could gain weight because there's a lot there is a lot of sugar in blueberries and they're very easy to overeat on for that reason. So you could get through blueberries very quickly. But interestingly, the glycemic load is very low. And the reason why is because there's a lot of fiber. And so it do, it's going to take a long time for you to get that sugar into your body rather than just consuming refined foods such as these cakes and pastries and all this other nonsense and these sweets and candies and whatever. Um, so the balance, and again, the wheel is a lot more sense when we look at this. You get all vitamins and minerals as well. The amino acid score is lower, but people wouldn't tend to eat blueberries for, for protein as such. Uh, but from a holistic sense, it's a far more sensible thing to be consuming. That's really all I wanted to show you on this. The conclusion to this is very simple. Black pudding is not a sensible thing to be eating. If you eat it, it will increase the chances of you having premature death from all sorts of nasties, be it coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and it's certainly linked to many, many different types of cancer, particularly bowel cancer, which is what the World Health Organization showed last year they're a lot a much more credible organization to trust when it comes to information on the foods that you eat there's still not all the information's come out but most of it is and that i think the take on this is you, you need to be careful you need to look at all of the data when you look at foods not just what some person has written about one particular food that doesn't make any sense that's not the way nutrition be, should be approached so thanks for watching so hopefully uh, this is useful subscribe to this if you want to i think it, it's helpful to do so and ask any questions that you feel might be useful because uh, I'm here to help ultimately. And if we can help people to be less confused and more informed, then they're likely to make better choices. And that means that they're likely to live longer, they're going to be happier and healthier. That's the goal of this, not to sell a particular product as may have been deemed in those articles that we looked at from those newspapers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.